What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. If you're following AI at all, Google have just made a pretty big announcement. So previously we had Google Gemini Code Assist, which is essentially a GitHub Copilot competitive sort of thing. You chat to it, it reads your code, it helps you code and things like that. Now, brand new as of a few hours ago, there's a new terminal application, the Gemini Terminal or Gemini CLI, which is an open source AI powered terminal that's actually pretty cool and has some really high limits. So you can hop in and use Google Gemini more than you'd expect right now. If we have a look at the latest announcement from Google, you'll find this linked down below blog.google scrolling down here. The first thing mentioned is limits and here you get 60 model requests per minute, a thousand a day, and it's open source completely free. This is pretty big. All you need to do is just log in with your Google account and get a free Gemini Code Assist license. That gets you access to Gemini 2.5 Pro and a 1 million token context window. And during this preview, they're offering the industry's largest allowance of 60 model requests a minute, a thousand a day at no charge. Scrolling down further, you can see that you can use Google's Gemini and it even supports MCP. So you can use your own custom models, chat with them, program, things like that. It's fully open source, which is good to see, and they expect developers to help contribute, etc. And of course, shared technology with Gemini Code Assist. So if you've got that working in VS Code, for example, it'll work happily with that as well. Pretty cool. So to get started, you'll find linked down below codeassist.google where you can get the Gemini Code Assist Visual Studio Code plugin or JetBrains plugins. And of course, get a link to the AI terminal right here. That'll take you straight to the GitHub page, also linked down below. To get started, scroll down, you'll see the terminal here. Even further down the quick start, you'll need to have Node.js 18 installed or higher. And you can check this by hitting start, typing in terminal, command prompt, or PowerShell, and using the command node hyphen V as such. If you see a response like this, you've got Node installed. Otherwise, head across to nodejs.org, also linked down below. Make sure everything at the top looks good. So latest version, Windows, Docker, that's fine, NPM. I'll choose to download the MSI here and run through the installer as usual. Once you've done so, you should be able to run npm and npx commands. Copying this first command will simply just run the Gemini CLI, and copying this second command here instead will download and install it and then start it up. The first one's just to test and add, the second one's to install it more permanently. So if I copy and paste in the command, it'll first download and install the Gemini CLI, and then it'll type in the Gemini command, hit enter. There we go. We can start by choosing a color theme. I'll obviously choose Dracula. Then we can either log in with Google, a Gemini API key or Vertex AI. If you want the free access, log in with Google here. Then it'll take you to your browser where you can sign in and it's now been authorized. So heading back to here, there we go. We now see Gemini CLI is working as expected. Fantastic. Here we can just type a message and we can get Gemini to start doing things on our system, scaffolding projects, etc. If we open up a new terminal window and want to get back, just use the command Gemini enter and now you're back to where we were. Okay, so let's say CD into documents, make a new folder called website, and in that folder, create a new Svelte project that shows people my photography, just use sample images for now, and tells them about me. I love coffee and games, and let's send it off to do that. So first of all, it'll plan things out, think about things, and we can actively monitor the context that's currently being used. So right now it's preparing to change into my documents folder. So we can choose to allow once, always allow certain commands or actions, or choose no to back out. Now I'll choose sure, make a new folder. And just like that, website is now created in my documents. Now it's scaffolding the project, or at least try to figure it out. It created a package lock, but not a package file. So it's trying again. And it seems like it's just stuck in a loop of trying to run a command, failing, and then deleting slash recreating the folder. So that didn't work too well. Let's try something a bit more simple. I'll just leave it at that so it doesn't have to play with NPM. Not too sure what's going on there, but I guess AI will be AI. There we go, something a bit more successful. It's starting to scaffold some code, stick some things in. And if we have a look here, we've got an index file as well as an images folder. Sounds good, CSS. This is at least looking a bit more promising than before. JS, sure, go for it. Adding some text. And after a few iterations of adding things, it's created the website for us and we can go and check it out. So opening the web page, bam, there 
we got a super simple web page showcasing a couple of different stock images. We can say make the images clickable and when clicked, open a full screen preview with a dim background that when clicked closes the image. Pretty simple overlay slash modal. It's thinking, making some changes. And there we go. So if we refresh the page, click an image, cool, click the background. Great, things are working as I'd hoped. It's set out this simple project here, which if I open in VS Code, simple HTML, JavaScript, CSS, and we've got this out of it. Obviously, this is just barely scratching the surface, but the most power that comes out of something like this is that it can also control your computer instead of just being locked to your editor's context like plugin for Visual Studio Code. So if we say, for example, create a git repo in this folder and commit all changes, it'll give us some commands to run. So git init seems fine. Git add git commit, which it seems to be struggling with, adds a message, even though it had to do it in a bit of a roundabout way. But there we go. It's now done the changes. We've got a git folder here. And as you'd expect, source control, we've got an initial commit here with all of the changes in it. Fantastic. This is just barely scratching the surface. Obviously, you can do so much more with something like this with more control over your system. And the best part is, is that it's completely free. Absolutely massive context window access to Gemini 2.5 Pro completely for free with really high limits. It's a really cool thing and you'll find all of the relative links down below. Now, obviously you can take this a step further. If we use forward slash for commands, we've got a bunch of commands here. If we use quit, it'll tell us things about our current session, such as the tokens that we used, etc. And if we fire up Gemini once more and this time use the command forward slash MCP, we can set up MCP servers in our browser, be it hugging face or something on our system. This is obviously a bit more in depth, but you could set it up to use use a bunch of different models so it can accomplish different things on your system. And of course, if you're running models locally, for example, you could save yourself a lot of money there, keep your code and files far more private, etc. But even without going into this extra nerdy bit of it, we can still get a ton out of this Gemini CLI. So again, you'll find everything you need down below. Thank you for watching. Mine has been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.